Awesome. You should see that recording has started. Um, good evening and welcome to our third annual Engineering Alumni Majors panel. My name is Katie Wiley and I'm the Engineering Career Coach in the Center for Career Development and Academic Exploration. I'm your host tonight for this panel and our panels tomorrow night. So if you are coming tomorrow night, you'll see my face again. Um, and we're going to interview these wonderful alumni about their careers um, post-graduation. Joining me tonight are many familiar faces for our students. Um, I would like to extend a huge thank you to our Tickle College of Engineering, Engineering Fundamentals, the Engage LLC, and Dr. Amy Bogalski for helping make tonight possible. And before we begin, um, Ashley, just want to go over one more time about the raffle, just in case for the students who are just joining us. And feel free to introduce your team again if you would like as well. Uh, sure. Um, hi, my name is Ashley Durthaler. I'm one of the head, or yes, I'm one of the head mentors for the Engage LLC here on campus. Um, I am a junior studying biomedical engineering. Um, so for the raffle tonight, we are raffling off six prizes, three tonight, three tomorrow. Um, I will send a link at the end of the panel tonight in the chat. Um, if you want to fill that out for us, that'd be great. And we will send out an email later tonight with the to the winners of those prizes. Um, also on my committee is Jeremiah, Michaela, and Jonathan. If you guys could introduce yourselves real quick. Hi, uh, my name is Jeremiah Pham. I'm a junior in civil engineering. And hi, I'm Jonathan. I am a senior in biomedical engineering. And I'm not sure if Michaela is with us right now, but she is a sophomore in chemical engineering. Fantastic. Thank you everyone for being with us tonight. Again, if you just joined us, we are now starting the civil engineering and industrial engineering panel. We have three wonderful panelists with us right now. We may have another one coming in a little bit later and we'll introduce Stan once he gets here. But for now, um, I just want a little bit of a brief intro of you all. Can you give us like your name, what you studied in school, your job title, and just a brief overview of what you do right now. And we'll start with Randy. Okay, uh, Randy Inkelbarger, and uh, I graduated uh, 82 undergraduate civil, and then went back in uh, 86 and graduated with a master's degree. And uh, point of emphasis was structural engineering. Um, while I was in graduate school, I was uh, uh, privileged to run the hard and concrete uh, structural lab and break a lot of concrete and tear up a lot of uh, embeds that TVA was testing for nuclear power plants. So we had a lot of fun there working in the lab in the basement of Perkins Hall. And um, then my first, uh, in between those uh, uh, degrees, I worked with Chicago Bridge and Iron and uh, went into the construction side of the business and returned to graduate school because I really wanted to be in design. So uh, and then I rose up through the ranks with a company called Lockwood Green and did project management, design management, leadership, and all those fun things. And made the mistake of uh, proving that I could write a proposal. Then I spent a good portion of my career in business development and then executive management, uh, retired from CH2M Hill at the ripe old age of 55 as a vice president in charge of uh, government uh, design and consulting uh, globally for the company, great position. But I left that because I was tired of traveling the globe and joined MS Technology where I'm president and CEO. We're a small uh, business in Oak Ridge, do a lot of work for the Department of Energy all around the complex in the United States. So that's me in a nutshell. Thank you so much, Randy. Austin, will you go next? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Austin Nauer. I graduated May 2019, so pretty recently here. Uh, I graduated in industrial engineering, uh, and currently I work for a company called Medline up here in Chicago, where I'm actually from. So, um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I graduated industrial engineer. My current job title is process engineer. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm pretty fresh out of college and hopefully can give you guys some good insight tonight. Thank you so much, Austin. Cliff, will you go next? Uh, yeah, sure. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Just, sorry. Sound check. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Cliff Hawkins. Uh, I graduated undergrad in 2016. 
Um, I went back to grad school in 2017 or 2018. Uh, my undergrad was industrial engineering as well. Um, so I've got a couple years of grad school under my belt. But um, so uh, basically, I, I work at Apple. I do uh, all of our long term planning and forecasting for uh, Apple Care iOS products. So watch app, uh, iPad, iPod, iPod, and iPhone. Um, and basically, um, what I get to do is I get to be responsible for pretty much all of our long-term excess and obsolescence materials, as well as driving materials for um, the entire long-term of the uh, horizon of each of these products. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, I think I covered just about everything there. Um, originally, I'm from Johnson City. Um, I've been working in the Bay Area. I guess I've been with the company for a little over a year and a half now. Um, I'm back in Tennessee working, for, working remotely. Uh, while everything kind of settles down with with COVID and everything, all the fires and everything. So uh, probably go back sometime between January and April. Just out of curiosity, Cliff, do you um, live and work in San Francisco? Uh, Cupertino, uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, so it's uh, the Bay Area is kind of a, a gray term, if you ask me. So uh, yeah, Cupertino awesome. is close enough. Thank you. I'm from California, so that was a deeply personal question. <laughs> Um, awesome. So our second question is, can you dive a little bit more into your background? Um, how did you get into the position you are today? And why did you choose your field of engineering? And we'll just start in the same order. So go ahead, Randy. Well, I wanted to be a structural engineer. I wanted to do design. And I was uh, very happy and progressing very rapidly in that career path, uh, designing facilities uh, in uh, the local area and as well as uh, some nice projects at uh, Duke University, North Carolina State University, and um, was doing a lot of uh, variable type projects and just really excited about my career. I was a group leader, had 11 people reporting to me by the time I was, gosh, 27 years old, I guess. And uh, it felt like everything was going great. And then I had one of my mentors at the company come to me one day and he said, um, uh, we need someone to help us write proposals. And we've seen your work on the uh, conceptual design reports and things we know you can write. Would you be interested in getting into business development? And that was the big leap forward. Um, so um, I think the big thing is um, finding what excites you. When I went to university, I was either gonna be an engineer, and if that didn't work out, I was gonna be a journalist. Because I was the one engineer in civil, especially, who was in honors English, and taking all of these uh, classes, uh, uh, you know, political science and things like that for my electives and everybody thought it was crazy. But I had a big interest in, in the news and I still read a lot and keep up with the, the news and things like that. So writing proposals and getting into business development and selling engineering services really energized me. So I would say, hey, find what energizes you and, and let that magnetism draw you to that and whatever fulfills you is what you need to seek out even though i really uh, i really regret i didn't go to work for apple in the bay area but that wasn't an opportunity when i came out thank you so much randy i think an engineer who loves english is in rare form <laughs> um austin will you go ahead and tell us a little bit more about your background yeah definitely so um you know I, I totally skipped the part where I'm supposed to tell you what I do, but a lot of what I do for Medline is um, like process improvement uh, in our in our kitting and in our injection mold uh, machine facility. So it's a lot of, you know, we're working with the people who are on the floor and and just kind of making their life easier while making the com company a little bit more money and and um, helping things move along a little faster. But you know, how I got into industrial engineering, I started off in mechanical engineering, like um, I know a lot of my peers in school did. Uh, and I kind of realized, you know, I, I like the people side of this, you know, like this is really fun getting to help people out. Um, when I kind of learned about industrial engineering, I had some mentors and family friends that I talked to them about. And so that's how I started going into industrial engineering. Um, you know, the, the, the working with people side of engineering is just so important and, and, and so crucial for a company to thrive and just move forward. And I found that I, I personally had the most impact, um, you know, with, with the skills. All right, he said he was on his way down. Oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, with, with, the, uh, with, with really the skills and the classes that, that were taught in the industrial engineering side. So I'm really glad that I did. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, when it comes to industrial engineering, the biggest thing I've found is in kind of the slogan that I'm sure if you go into the field, all the teachers will tell you it's the real goal is not really to make things more efficient or more productive, but it's really just to help people be more productive by making their life easier. And there's so many ways we, we can, you know, do that as industrial engineers and engineers in general. And I'm sure we'll talk about that a little later. But, uh, but yeah, that's kind of the background of how I got into it. Thank you, Austin. Cliff, will you give us a little bit of background about how you got into your position? Sure, yeah. Um, I guess I'll start with why I picked IE. Um, so my grandfather was an industrial engineer uh, a long, long time ago. Um, I really liked the work that he did from what I understood of it. Um, but I, I think uh, I relate a lot to uh, what Austin had to, had to contribute there where um, you know, it, it's a people facing side of things um, of engineering, right? Um, you get a little bit of business and you get a little bit of um, actual um, process engineering, right? Um, so improving efficiency is but more important working with people to make their jobs a lot easier. Um, so I picked, I picked industrial engineering actually right out, of, right out of college or right out of high school. Um, stuck with it the whole way. I really actually liked the, the smaller class ratio to, to faculty. Um, you get a good chance to really know a lot of the professors and um, you know, you can actually, we, we invited them out quite a bit. Uh, but, um, you know, I think, I think as far as uh, learning, the, the different learning aspects, right, from production scheduling to operations research to, um, I guess, really simulation, a lot of different, a lot of different categories of, of subjects that I really enjoyed. Um, so I, I stuck with that. Um, as far as how I got into the position I am in today, uh, I interned with the company. Um, uh, but I actually met somebody uh, who had just finished working for the company who passed my resume along. So um, I had no intention of working for Apple. Um, I was actually probably going to go work for S.E. Johnson in um, Racing, uh, Wisconsin, and uh, just ended up getting my resume passed along from a guy I met. And uh, intern internship went well. And uh, there shortly after, I got a job offer and decided to take it. Um, yeah, that's kind of uh, kind of fell into it, I guess. Yeah, that just tells you the importance of like networking, right? And, and yeah, yeah, and giving your resume to people, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, and I guess, again, echoing some of Austin's comments there where, um, you know, your your soft skills are very, very important. Um, no matter what discipline of engineering you're in, um, your ability to work with other people to to work on a team and then to contribute positively and, and to really be cohesive um, matters no matter what you're doing, right? That's all great advice. Our next question is, what's one tip you wish you got while you're still in school? So if you could think back, you know, hindsight is 2020, right? What would you wish that somebody told you while you were an undergraduate that would have prepared you better for your post-graduation plans? And Randy, we'll start with you. Okay. Wow, that's a that's a tough one. I have to go back a long way. And uh, um, but um, it's really an easy one. And I think uh, I wish someone had encouraged me more to play to my strengths. Um, at CH Two M Hill, uh, I was taught a project management tool called the Abundance Model, where you go in and you address the a uh, uh, problem project by looking at the successes on the project and encouraging everybody to build on the successes and pull the team together and unite the team. And all, all through my career, I've been waiting for that training that taught me how to be an aggressive uh, communicator or that hard-nosed boss or that skilled negotiator that was chef, you know, shifty and, and clever. And that doesn't exist. The successful people in the engineering business are the collaborators and the people who are out there willing to uh, make sacrifices for the good of the team and bring everybody along together and find ways to, to get uh, things done in a collaborative manner. And it sounds like Austin and Clifford or, or Cliff are both on a, a great trajectory for their career. They figured this out really early. And I wish someone had encouraged me with more of that uh, when I was younger because I kept looking at those few managers that were the hard nosed jerks, if you will, and going, wow, how did they get there? I'm not wired that way. That's not me. I don't want to be that way. But and then I found out the really, really, truly successful and happy people were the ones that were collaborators and leaders and, and uh, uh, not really focused on themselves, but on the, the betterment of the team. 
Yeah, that's such great advice. Thank you so much. Austin, do you want to speak to that question? Yeah, definitely. I, I, um, I've got two tips uh, that I wish I would have gotten and one that I really took to and that's proven to be really helpful for me and I'm sure you guys will hear it a thousand times as well from uh, Dr. Martin. But to start, um, you know, one of, the, one of the tips that I wish I got in school was to do a little bit of outside reach, research um, kind of while you're in school. Um, so much of what you're going to learn in, in college is very theoretical and, you know, it's also very important and, and very crucial to your development. But, you know, if, if you could do some, some of that outside research, I do, a, I do a whole lot of it now for my class or for my, uh, for my job and, and the different projects that I work on. Um, but if I were to done that in school and, you know, research some of the applications that what we talk about in class are, you know, I, I would have a much better understanding of really how those classes are applicable because I, I'm sure, you know, all of you listening and, and, and like myself when I was in college, you listen to some of this stuff and you're like, oh, this is never going to apply to me or, or I don't even know what the heck this guy's talking about, you know, but, but uh, everything that you learn is, is, you know, just another tool in your tool belt and it's just knowing where to, where to apply it. And you don't really know where to apply it unless you kind of have that experience. And, you know, it's tough to get experience when you're working your tail off in, in college. But, you know, if you could do some of that outside research, learn how these machines work, learn about the inputs that go into them, learn about different processes in these, in these successful companies. Um, it'll really help you out going into your job. And the second is asking questions. I mean, this is a pretty obvious one, but being a good question asker is so important. Knowing the right questions to ask, um, to get the information that you need and to understand in a way that makes sense to you. Um, so important. And then the last uh, tip of advice that I actually did get in, in, co in college was finding a really good mentor. Um, you know, Randy talked about the, the, people you kind of work under and you got your people who are kind of jerks. I've got them too. And, but you've got those people who are really interested in your success. And if you can kind of, you know, see, you know, either people who are interested in your success or people who are successful kind of seeing what makes them successful and then, you know, kind of going under their wing to learn the things that they have to say and the things that they do for the, for the company or in their job. Um, it, it's been such a huge impact me in the first year and a half that I've had out of school and in my job. And, um, you know, it, it helps sharpen your skills much quicker. Uh, you have that personal, you know, relationship within a workplace. So you can go to someone and say, Hey, I don't understand this. Or, Hey, can you explain this to me? Or, Hey, tell me how to do this better. Cause it's taken me about 10 years to do it. Uh, it's all so important. So yeah, those are my three. Thank you so much, Austin. Cliff, will you speak to that please? Yeah, I think Austin took my question one. Um, that's actually a, it's a wonderful tip. And it's one that I highly recommend. Um, I think one of the one of the pieces of advice that I got uh, when I first started the internship, actually, that I, I would have liked to have built on a little bit more is, is not to be afraid to um, ask for help or to to get advice. Right. Um, there's a lot of smart people, um, whether you're in the job or on the job or or in class, there's a ton of smart people and everybody thinks that they're not supposed to be asking questions. Uh, so don't be afraid to be the person who asks how it works or what to do, right? Um, I think another piece of advice I would give um, that I, I, I actually took a little bit to heart, um, uh, I, I took other classes and I worked to, I worked to build my network out, right? Um, some of the people that I went to college with, um, you know, I've, I've stuck with for a very, very long time. Um, now, I guess it gets it's really been five or six years now. Um, and, and really, they're able to recommend you or help you get uh, get further in life as far as, you know, for co-ops um, or, you know, recommendations, letters of recommendation to, to help you get started in your jobs, right? Um, um, you know, in, in the case of the co-ops that I did, um, I had to be able to know a lot of different uh, or had to be able to lean on a lot of my friends uh, that I, that had worked there before or um, that, you know, knew more about it than I did, right? Um, and so getting the opportunity to, to see these people in other classes or to, or to try and build out your network um, and really expand your, your reach, right, um, can go a, a long way uh, in helping you get a job. Thank you so much. I think Austin and Cliff may be interested to know that Dr. Martin, who Austin mentioned, um, is actually retiring this year and is off to start his own pickleball club in Knoxville. So pickleball is your thing. I can, I got connections for you. Um, yeah, 
<laughs> awesome. So our next question here is what are the top skills needed for your position or some of the positions that you have been in in the past? Randy, we'll start with you. Well, having a really good backhand with spin is really important for pickleball. I do know that. So um, our neighborhood's big on pickleball. Uh, the, the, the big things have already been talked about. It's communication. And uh, I think the, the big thing that is really important to learn as soon as possible and hone your skills is that communication is a two-way street. You've got to be a good listener. And that was a skill I had to work on. Uh, I was... Um, uh, the guy that liked to write it down and liked to talk about it and everything. And it took me a long time to improve. And I continuously have little checks that I use to say, hey, you've been talking too long. You need to stop and listen and make sure you're looking at people and you're nodding and you're writing down every now and then something they say so that they know you're listening and they'll open up to you and share with you what you need to be told that sometimes it's hard for people to open up and say, this project's in trouble, or this person's not happy in the role you've assigned them to. And um, to, to really reach a level of senior management, I think you need to strive to be a really good communicator, an excellent listener, and someone who's empathetic and, and will listen and care about what you're hearing. Thank you so much, Randy. Austin? Yeah, Randy nailed it there for sure. Um, the whole communication side with engineering is just so important. Um, you know, you can do the best thing in the world, but if you can't communicate it with someone, you're, it's kind of tough to, to get someone to buy into it or, or, you know, to have someone who's, you know, if you're fresh out of college like me, really, really believe you and, and believe in you. So to have that communication is huge. Um, the other thing that I'd say is, is being adaptable. Um, you know, I, I kind of tuned into the last uh, seminar that we had here. And, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the people on the panel were saying, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be tough to apply some of what you know to, co to your, in college to your job. Um, but the biggest thing that you guys will learn is as engineers, I mean, engineers are pliable as it gets. You, you have such a wide array of things that you need to be able to do and do right and learn quickly. Uh, and, and just being adaptable, um, is, is so important and be willing to be adaptable too. There's going to be things that you don't like doing in your, in your job, things that, you know, aren't as fun as working on these big machines, if that's what you like, or, you know, some people like diving into data, you know, doing stuff like that. But if you can kind of learn um, to love these different areas of your study, I mean, that's just so important and it makes you a much more versatile person as well. Yeah, that's such a good point, Austin. There, I will guarantee you that there's no job that you're going to love 100% of everything that you do, right? There's always going to be some things that you have to, you know, compromise your interest for the sake of the team or something like that. So um, it's just unrealistic to love everything about your job. Um, yeah. But you have to know how to manage those things too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much, Austin. Cliff, will you speak on that question? Sure. Yeah. Um, so... I think communication is extremely important. Um, one thing I would highly recommend if you're not already comfortable with it um, is actually Excel. Um, you'd be very, very surprised that at every level of every job, how many people don't know just how powerful it really is. Um, I'm a data guy. Um, I, I love data um, and I deal with it every day. So that, that's just me. That's my bread and butter. Um, I, think, I think, you know, Excel and Tableau are two um, analytical uh, tools and softwares that um, will take you a very long way. Um, I think as Randy kind of hinted at it, um, you know, being able to speak to uh, the higher ups, the executives, the leadership in your, in your organizations. Um, I think in graduate school, they kind of refer to it as speaking the language of the chief, um, where the people who are looking in the, in those chief, in those chief officers, right. Um, they're looking for, uh, you know, a certain kind of feedback and a certain kind of analysis that, you know, uh, you can hit really quickly. Um, and you can get really, really good uh, results with both of those programs. Um, let's see what else. Um, I think, yeah, you have to have you have to have a passion uh, for for what you're doing, right? Um, you have to you have to really like it. Um, it you don't want to be stuck in one of those nine to fives. Otherwise, you know, you. I guess the the cliche is uh, if if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Um, the other way around is also true, right? Uh, so you have to you have to really like what you do. Um, 
I think, I think again, also to be successful though, yeah, you have to be uh, very cohesive. Um, you have to be able to work well with others um, and, and kind of understand and, and be coachable as well, right? Um, if you're just starting at the job, right? Learn and learn in that adaptability that Austin's touching on, right? Um, you have to be able to figure out quickly, um, you know, get up that learning curve and the sooner you do, the, the better off you'll be, right? Thank you so much, Cliff. Our next question is, what is your favorite and your least favorite part about your current position? Randy, I'll start with you. Well, of course, my, my favorite part is developing, mentoring, and, and bringing along young talent and helping them understand where their strengths are and encouraging them to invest in uh, improving areas that could uh, be uh, sharpened a little bit. But again, I try to do that from the abundance model. You know, it's not, I'm gonna beat you up for what you did wrong yesterday. It's gonna be all about, this is what you do extremely well. And these are some areas that I can help you improve. And uh, that, that's always the, the best part of the game. And, and, it's, uh, it's, and it's everybody. I mean, I, I have, uh, as president and CEO, I have a board of directors that are owners of the company. And um, when I took over this role, our, chief uh, a financial officer, she'd been with the company several years before I took over. And uh, our board mem uh, meetings always start with a, uh, uh, a value statement. And um, so I started taking those opening comments, which were meant to be some kind of raw, raw moment. And I would use them to set the stage for either the bad news or the big ask that was going to come later in the meeting. So, uh, you know, if, if it was going to be on the shareholder value of community service, then I would talk about some article that I'd read or something exciting about the value of community service. And then later on in the meeting, I was going to ask them for money for the community, something, whatever, you know, tour to cure or whatever I was into. So uh, Sarah picked up on that really quick and she says, you really know how to play the game. And I said, well, I soften them up in the opening and then the close is much easier. So but I think uh, the, I enjoy the communication and mentoring people, but what I hate is when it doesn't work and you have to sit down with someone and help them find the next position. And uh, I have laid people off and fired people and I always try to make sure I've lined them up another job before I do it because that's the hardest part of the game. And I think the biggest service I can do with my influence and my network is when I sit there and tell that person, you're no longer needed here because your job is obsolete or we don't have funding or you're not a good fit, but hey, here's three people you can call. They're looking for someone that I think you can make really happy. And that's the hardest part of my job uh, is uh, sometimes you can't find something for all those people. And that, that's the hardest part. Oh, uh, one other thing I'll, I'll say and I'll shut up. All of you who are worried about asking a professor or asking uh, a supervisor or something for help or a question or something like that, let me tell you, people that are more farther along in your career and are seeing the end of that career want to do nothing more than help you to make sure that the next generation has the benefit of the lessons they've learned and the joys that they've experienced. So, so don't be afraid to ask. Thank you so much, Randy. I think that's so true, right? They, our professors could have gone off and done research and development at some company, but they chose to be a professor for a reason. And that's because they want to meet students. They want to help students. Um, thank you so much. Austin, will you speak to that question? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, definitely. Randy, I agree with you, you know, being pretty fresh out of college. I know one of one of the best experiences that I've had is just, you know, getting stuck really, but getting stuck and then having to go ask a professor for a question. I mean, that was so important. Um, I know that's not related to the question, but I wanted to emphasize that because I thought that was an excellent point. Um, but the favorite part of my role, you know, I, I spoke to it a little earlier is, is really taking the skills that I've learned, the technical skills and, and the soft people skills and, and just being able to help the people, you know, in, in our warehouse, the, the people in our warehouse, um, it's a lot of, you know, walking around and doing manual activity. And so to see the relief that people get when, when I'm able to come in and help them, you know, make things easier for them so that they can get just as much, if not more done is, is hands down my favorite part. Um, you know, it strengthens those connections 
that you have with them. And then if you ever need some help, you know, from someone on the floor or from one of your maintenance guys or whoever, it just makes that connection and that ask a lot easier. Um, you know, Cliff talked about data in, in the last in, in the last question, and, and that's really one of the avenues um, that I use to help people. Um, you know, if if you guys end up going into industrial engineering, you'll take a class called information systems. And when I took it, I, I took it. I was like, what is going on here? Like, I am. It's one of those classes where you're like, I'm never going to use this. I use it every single day in my job. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. Um, and a lot of it is just getting good data, um, but you know, and if you can get good data, you know, as Cliff said, if you can get really good at Excel uh, and Visual Basic and uh, SQL and all the fun stuff that goes with it, um, it is a beautiful, if not perfect avenue to really help people. If you can get that live data that makes their jobs easier, uh, it makes them more autonomous, it gives them more responsibility, and, or not responsibility and meaning they need to do more, but more, um, you know, bang for their buck in, in what they're doing. Uh, it's just so important and it, and it helps people. Um, my least favorite thing about my role, um, I don't know, it's, it's a pretty fun role. You know, I get to work with big machines and with people, but I'd say the least favorite um, is probably when that big data gets a little too big and you're kind of sitting there at a desk for a while and, it, and it'll happen. But, um, you know, if you can push through that and you can really fine tune your skills and, you know, Excel and, you know, whether it's Excel or AutoCAD or anything else like that, uh, you're going to have such a big impact in, you know, your internship, your co-op, and then, you know, eventually your job. Uh, if you can have that big impact, you know, it helps people, it helps yourself, and it just, it makes life a lot easier. Thanks, Austin. Go ahead, Cliff. Yeah. Um, let's see. What do I like the most? Um, Honestly, I, I love my work family. Um, the, my coworkers come to work every single day. Um, all of them are my senior, but they are all of them very dedicated to their jobs. Everybody wants to do uh, the very best that they can for the customer. Um, Cause at the end of the day, we're, we're about as close to customer facing as possible in, in my organization. So um, I really like the attitude and the positivity um, that comes along with it. Um, and then to add to that, also the, the company's stance is uh, to be, you know, just about as agile as possible. Um, we have a supply chain that um, can really turn on a dime uh, if, it, if it's good to benefit the customer or the company or both. In most cases, um, you know, working for a company like that, that's very, um, very, very agile and able to, you know, change as, as quickly as possible, you know, with more than 150,000 employees globally, right? Um, I think probably what I like the least um, is, hmm, uh, I guess the, the agile part is a, is a kind of a double-edged sword there, right? Uh, where you, you can change very quickly, right? But that's not without a cost, um, whether it's the time that you put in or or the hassle that you have to to deal with change, right? Everybody says that change change is pain, or, or you know, everybody resists change, um, and and to some extent that's true. Um, it is it is tough, right? Um, but again, you have a ton of coworkers and your bosses and and people you work with that are um, just as dedicated to to that change and, and understand why we're doing it. Um, that really comes across well, and so. Um, even even when it's tough and it, it's not the easiest thing in the world, um, you know, it's still very manageable within the company. Thank you so much. And our last scripted question here um, is what opportunities do you, does your company provide for internships and co-ops? And after this question, we'll get to some of our student questions. Randy? Uh, we always try to pick up an intern in the summer, uh, civil, structural, mechanical, electrical, um, just depends on what our demands are and, and bring someone in over the summer. And uh, it really depends on our workload and the type projects that we have going on at the time. Um, so we would, we would reach out and, and try to fill that. Um, we brought on a, uh, a mechanical intern. Uh, he was finishing up uh, between his junior and senior year. Uh, and uh, he still works for the company. Um, and um, uh, he actually works for a sister company. Uh, he doesn't work for MS Technology. He works for Melinatech, which uh, we're all owned by the same owners and we share resources back and forth. So, but yeah, that's, uh, that was our last one. Um, we brought some in right out of high school even. Um, 
we teach them project controls and project management and some of the things you don't get a lot of in school and um, emphasize the value of Excel. That's certainly one thing. And uh, we've had um, one intern uh, worked on uh, uh, some of our um, business development side. He worked in the office and then we, we had him work in the shop for a while as well. So, so yeah, we love to have an intern every summer. But we do not have a co-op program. Thank you so much. Austin? Yeah, um, so I actually was fortunate enough to go through the intern program through Medline. Um, and we do offer an intern program. I don't think we offer a co-op program, but with our intern, um, you know, with our internship opportunities, um, th there's a whole bunch of them and they're in a lot of different locations. Um, you know, the one I went through was a operations uh, intern, or I guess it'd be a pr uh, engineering process engineer or whatever intern, but um, but yeah, it, it was a really great experience. The company does a great job running it. We did so many fun things during the summer. We, you know, they do a bunch of group of events and we did like a collaboration project that, that my group won. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, they'll take you to a Cubs game out in Chicago and, you know, you get to go to Arlington horse track and it's, it's, it's a, it's a blast. Um, and, it, and it's very impactful as well. You know, Randy talked about sharpening your skills, mainly your Excel skills, and you'll get that, you'll get that at Medline for sure. But, um, you know, the projects that we give to our interns are all projects that, you know, you know, maybe we give to our engineers, or we would give to our engineers. And maybe, you know, they're a little bit easier for someone who's been here for a while, but that's just because, you know, we kind of know what the resources are. But, you know, with that being said, um, the, the project that I did during my internship is, is still very much so um, like in, out, out in the warehouse right now. I, I worked, it was, it was a small little project for cartons and reorganizing them and, um, you know, based on our monthly usage and kind of doing a Kanban system for them. But we still use it, you know, every day and, and it's still out there. So it's, it's a great opportunity to really have a, a, you know, not only an impact, but a lasting impact and get great experience um, doing a project that you know someone like myself who has been here for a couple of years now would, would end up doing. So, yeah. Thank you. Cliff, if you could speak to Apple's internships and co-ops, I know a lot of our students are interested in this. And something that I will tell you about Apple is they're not going to recruit on campus. So this is information that you should listen to right now because they don't need to recruit right a lot of people are interested in working at apple so if you could tell us a little bit about that that'd be awesome yeah yeah so um i am trying desperately to get them out here um so yes we offer internships i think we have somewhere around like more than a thousand every year um i don't know about co-ops i i want to say we do um usually for undergrads um, but not for graduate students. It's usually always internships. Um, so again, uh, with that said, we have all different levels of internships all across the company. Um, so if you're uh, you know, first, second, third year undergrad, um, do not be afraid to apply. If you are a graduate student, do not be afraid to apply. Um, again, I, I'm trying to get us out there, at least for the graduate level, um, to get us recruiting while our, our numbers are incredible, both for industrial engineering and for supply chain. So um, I, I think uh, kind of echoing some of the comments that I, that I heard earlier, right, is that um, it's a really, really good opportunity to showcase what you have to offer to the company, right? Um, whether your skills lie with people, with Excel, with, um, you know, management or project management, whatever, um, they have a really good way of putting you in the right position to succeed with, again, with your manager, um, the project that they actually give you, um, it usually tends to align, you'll find um, like perfectly with your work experience or, or what you've done in the past. Um, I came from an ops background, um, working a lot on plant floors. I used to do plastic injection molding, um, used to do sheet metal manufacturing, and I even did uh, soybean oil and extraction, uh, oil and extraction from Cargill. So, Nothing related to um, anything that Apple actually does, but um, you know my projects were uh, very, very well aligned with the experiences that I shared during my interviews with them. Um, I think as far as the as far as actually getting the interviews, um, you know, obviously you, you can apply. Um, you can get your resume submitted internally. Um, it kind of just depends. It, it it definitely varies for sure. But um, yeah, I think uh, yeah. 
I don't know if our internships are international or not. Most of them are probably going to be based in Austin or in Cupertino. Um, so yeah. Thank you so much, Cliff. Well, I would love to open up the questions to our students. So if you have any questions, students, that you want to ask our panelists, please go ahead and put them in the chat or unmute yourself and ask your question now. We'll give them a little bit to type it if it's in the chat. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> I know, Randy, this is your second time doing this panel. Is it, were you, did you do it three times or is this only your second? It's only my second. Okay, awesome. Thank you for coming back. Oh, and yeah. Austin and Cliff are new to our panel, but um, both students I saw when I was in industrial engineering. So thank you for coming. Yeah, you guys do a great job. Thanks. You yeah, too, thank Randy. You. Hopefully, hopefully one day we get to be in your shoes. <laughs> It's, Any uh, questions from our students? Drew says, as an industrial engineer, would you also recommend getting a degree in business? Hmm. Yeah, so, sure, yeah, I'll start. Um, you know, I, I, I haven't had the chance to go to grad school yet. I, I, I would very much like to. Um, there's definitely a lot of crossover. Um, I would definitely suggest taking, you know, a, a business management or a project management class. Well, I guess you will take a project management class if you go to the IC program. But um, yeah, yeah, definitely take some business classes while, while you have the opportunity to. There is a lot of crossover when it comes to costing of different parts or costing in, in the warehouse. That's something that I've done a whole bunch of, um, especially in the past few months. Um, but yeah, absolutely. The project management, the costing side is, is a very huge part of industrial engineering. Um, a lot of it you'll get, um, you know, during your curriculum as well, which is something that I loved about Tennessee and Tennessee's ISC program was, you know, while we, yeah, we learned a lot of technical things and some soft skills, we actually were able to kind of dabble in, in the business side and, and, you know, future values and previous values and things like that. So, it, it, it's not going to hurt at all. If anything, it'll, it'll very much help you. So yeah, I would, I would de definitely um, recommend taking some classes for that, if not get, getting a degree as well. Yeah, um, uh, I guess my answer is yes, uh, I would recommend it. Um, but I would also caveat that by saying that it, it needs to be right for you, right? Um, you, you have to really, um, it's, it's both a time commitment and it's a cost commitment, right? Um, even if you go in state or out, out of state, whatever. Um, so if you really like the job you have and you have an opportunity to, to get a, a second degree, uh, whether if you're double majoring while you're an undergrad, awesome, that's a lot of work. Uh, or if you are getting your company to sponsor you to go back to grad school, um, that's even better. Um, so, so my recommendation would be keep it in mind. Um, definitely something that won't hurt right? Um, it'll put you on a fast track, usually in a lot of different companies to uh, potentially move up a little bit faster or to get into a manager track, whatever your goals are, right? So I would, before you go back to school, um, I would definitely recommend sitting down with yourself and, and trying to reflect and figure out if that's what you want with your career, right? Because um, if you're happy with what you're doing and, and you think you're on the right trajectory, then you don't have to, but um, it, it was right for me. So that's why I said yes. And Cliff, did you do the MSMBA program? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I um, two years, one and a half in business school and one year in um, industrial engineering as well. Awesome, thank you. And yeah. Drew, that is an option as well. If you're thinking about going straight into a master's program, we do have that MSMBA program where you'd be getting a dual degree, an MS in industrial engineering and an MBA at the same time in, in about two and a half years. Awesome. Any other questions before we thank our panelists here? Don't be shy. Hey, I would uh, tell everybody to uh, think about getting that dual degree during a recession. There's no better time to invest in yourself when the job market's tight. So, you know, it's, it's a good time to do it. Thank you so much. Okay, well, I don't see any other questions. So thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate that you want to give your time back to
providing our students some career education. Um, and I am going to ask Ashley to come back and introduce that raffle one more time. Yeah, of course. Um, hi guys again. If you missed the beginning of this um, panel, I am part of the LLC and we're raffling off six prizes, three today, three tomorrow night. Um, I will put a link in the chat that will take you to a Google form. If you can fill that out, you'll be entered into the prize and we'll send an email to the winners tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashley. And yeah, just to remind our students, tomorrow night we'll be talking about mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, biomedical engineering, chemical engineering, nuclear, and material science. So if any of those are of interest to you, please come back tomorrow night for our panels then. Again, thank you so much to our panelists. We really appreciate you. Um, and I, we hope that everyone has a great night. Thanks, Katie. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. Bye, y'all. Well done, everyone. Ha, ha, ha.